Masech Nedarim Daf Kaftet. The uh, topic today is whether kedusha that applies to something can just disappear, or do you have to transfer it by redemption onto something else? And is there a distinction between the two types of kedusha? Kedusha taguf is where something is intrinsically holy in its body. Like if I say this animal will be a korban, and so it actually has to be given over as a korban. Uh, to be sacrificed. The other type is Kedushat Damim, where I say something is holy, but it just means that its monetary value is holy, in which case it can be transferred onto money. But in either case, um, can if a certain uh, condition is met, can that kedusha of the of the body or of the money simply disappear uh, ever, or does it remain until uh, something or other happens if it gets redeemed? Okay, so the the topic will be uh, broached because of the second part of the Mishnah. Remember, the Mishnah distinguish between two formulas. If you say that these trees will be korban if they are not cut down, Gemara assumed that this means with a time limit. He says if they're not cut down today, then they will be korban. So then once the day ends and they are not cut down, they become consecrated. Uh, But if they are cut down during the day, then they are not consecrated. So that's a simple if, then you see if the condition is fulfilled. There's no complication here. But the more difficult uh, formula is this one. These trees are consecrated until they are cut down. So that means they're going to be concentrated right, consecrated right now until the point that they're cut down. And then what happens after they're cut down? So this is not clear. The Mishnah says, En lehem pijon, it just says you cannot redeem it. Whereas in the first case, uh, should they not be cut down and they become holy, you can always redeem it. Um, and then that's it. They are no longer uh, consecrated anymore. In this case, they cannot be redeemed. So what does that mean that they cannot be redeemed? This will be two, they have two interpretations beginning here. So what does that mean? Are they going, if I say from now, they are sanc- sanc- um, consecrated from now? until they're cut down. So does that mean that they, and they, and you cannot redeem it. So they're going to be consecrated right now until I cut them down and uh, they cannot be redeemed. Well, why not? What if I do redeem it? There's not, will it not work? Right? I can't redeem it ever. Um, how about before I cut them down? How about after I cut them down? Then can I redeem it? Or do I have to redeem it? Does the consecration only happen until it gets, it's uh, ready to cut down, but after it's cut down, then it leaves? This is not clear. So, first opinion. Amar of Pada. Pedaan chozrot vekodshot, pedaan chozrot vekodshot, achi kasesu. So, point number one is because I said these are um, korban until I cut them down, that means they're going to be korban the whole time from now until I cut them down. And if, uh, you know, if I cut them down after 10 years, after one year, I redeem it. Well, then they immediately become. Uh, Kodesh again, uh, because I said they're Kodesh from now until then. So even if I redeem it with money, that money will be holy, but then immediately holiness comes back onto the branches of the tree and they are holy once again. Uh, so the point of En Podin means you can try to redeem it, but as many times as you do it, the holiness will come right back on. That's uh, point number one of Rabada. Now, what happens if I do redeem it? Nixesu podan pamachat vedayo. Once I cut it down, once I do cut it down, uh, then I take these branches. They are consecrated because I consecrated them already. So it doesn't the consecration doesn't just disappear. Uh, rather, I have to redeem it. But then I could do it one time, and that's all. Because now they're cut down. So my original formula: they should be consecrated from now until I cut them down. So now that's not going to reapply. Um, but I do have to consecrate it because Kiddusha does not just just disappear. There's a kind of conservation of Kiddusha. It will go on to the coins, and that's all. Good. That's how Rapada explains it. Ve'ula amar, kevan shenikshesu, shub en podan. Ula disagrees, at least with the second part of it, of what happens at the point that they are cut down. He says, once they're cut down, 
you don't have to redeem it anymore. No need to redeem it. Remember, the original formula was that they should be consecrated from now until I cut them down. That means I'm giving a time limit to the Kiddushah. Once I cut them down, that's it. The Kiddushah disappears and I don't even have to redeem it. According to Allah, what happens if I redeem it during the time? He doesn't really address that. So we, we'll leave that as an unknown. Okay, so that's the two opinions. Now, Amalei Rav Hamnuna, Rav Hamnuna asks Ula, Kedusha Shabahen, Lehechan Halcha, where did the Kedusha go? What do you mean, it just disappeared? I'll give you an analogy. Uma im ilu Amalei Isha, Hayom at Ishti, Un Machar i at Ishti, Min Afka Belo Get, If I do Kedushin to a woman, Kedushin to a woman is kind of also, it's called Kedushin, it's kind of giving Kedusha, she is holy um, to the husband and, and consecrated in a way to him, cannot be with anybody else, just like something that is made holy cannot be used for anything else, has to be only used for the purpose that is made holy. So there's a similarity, even though there is, there it is different, which we're going to say in a second. So if um, I would go to a woman and say, you are my wife today, but you are not my wife uh, tomorrow. Now, would that work? Will she be my wife only now? Can I give a time limit to the marriage? Obviously not. Once you make a wife, do uh, harat mikudesh and do the ceremony, then you're married. The only way to get out of it is to give her a get or die. Um, but you can't just give a, a do a time limit on a marriage. It doesn't work. And so, Rav Amnuna, I would ask you the same thing here. Uh, when the person said, "This tree, these trees, this tree is kodesh." Uh, until I cut it down, okay, so now it's Kodesh, and it's going to continue to be Kodesh, after I cut it down, it remains Kodesh, you can't just, it can't just go away without doing something, just like you have to give a get, you have to do Pijan, and you say, fine, the Kiddushah will go on the coins, that will work, that's what Av Pada said. So, um, Rav Pada makes make sense. The Kiddushah remains on the trees until you do redemption. Ula, you don't make sense. You can't simply disappear the Kiddushah just like you cannot disappear Kiddushin of a woman. Good. That's a good question. But Rav is going to come and try to defend Ula. Amar le Rav, Mi kamedamet Kiddushat tamim li Kiddushat haguf Kiddushat tamim pak abikdi. Kedushat Haguf, Lapak Abikdi. Rava says, well, you're comparing two different types of sanctity, sanctity of money and sanctity of, a, of intrinsic, in, of a body. Kedushat, when it comes to something that's just monetary sanctity, that's these trees, the trees themselves. I'm not donating the trees themselves to be burnt on the altar. I'm just donating the value of the trees. And so the value of the trees while it's um, holy, I can redeem it and transfer it to money. Um, and I can also put a time limit on it and say, these trees will be holy until whatever condition, until I cut them down. And yes, where does the Kiddushah go? It disappears. So, uh, right, uh, so yes, I can do that, just like I commit myself to a certain amount of money, and then the commitment disappears. That's totally fine. That's a much more uh, uh, easily maneuverable type of Kiddushah. Whereas Kiddushat Haguf, intrinsic holiness, that you cannot get rid of. That would apply to a woman who's betrothed. She, uh, that's intrinsic to her. This is not a monetary value, right? She can't say, listen, instead of me, take this money, right? I'll transfer my, um, my marriage uh, to the money and you'll be married to the money. Um, maybe some guys like their money more than their wives, but it doesn't work. Um, and so, uh, so this is two different things. You can't compare the two. Um, similarly, another example of Kiddushat Haguf they're about to see is um, uh, in an animal that is, um, uh, is made holy as a korban. I'm actually going to sacrifice this animal. Once I say, you know, this, this animal, I'm going to make an ola. I can't undo it. I can't transfer it to money. I can't even transfer it to another animal. You know the law that if I say this animal is holy, then I say, no, I changed my mind. I want to put that animal B instead. Then both of them become holy, right? There's no way to undo the um, intrinsic bodily kedusha. And so that's why it's different. So Rava is defending Ula. In fact, yes, when the condition gets met, the kedusha, the monetary kedusha, disappears. No problem. Fine. Now, Amale Abaye, 
Kedushat Haguf lo pak'a b'kdi. Abaye says, hold on, is that really true that the kedusha of a body does not go away? Rava, I challenge you on that point. I think that even intrinsic kedusha can disappear. Not in the case of marriage. He, he doesn't think you could do it there. But he's going to go a step further. When it comes to an animal sacrifice, yes, there is a way to undo it. Here is his proof. Vehatanya. The Braita teaches that if I take this uh, ox here and I say this ox will be, I'm dedicating as a burnt offering, and we're assuming here he means an actual uh, korban that I'm going to give to the Bet HaMikdash and they're going to sacrifice it on the altar. And I designated as an Ola for 30 days. After 30 days, I designated as a Shilamim. And he says, that, Be'ayta says, that works. And the first 30 days, it'll be an Ola. So if I happen to bring it to the Beit HaMikdash from now, before 30 days, then it'll be sacrificed as an Ola. But if I delay and I bring it after 30 days, then that will be offered as a Shilamim. Now you have to understand, an Ola is a higher level of kedusha than a Shilamim. It's Koshe Kodashim. Shilamim is simple, simply Kadashim Kalim. And so now we ask, am I, how come I could change it in the middle? Uh, because even though it's holiness uh, in, in, intrinsic in the body, that could go away. The Kedusha of an Ola, which is high level, the whole thing will have to be burnt. I gave a time limit. Only for 30 days I want it to be Ola. What happens after that? I gave a condition, and then that's it. It goes away, and now it'll be a shilamim instead. So Abayez says, I agree, for sure you can, um, um, mon- monetary can go away, but even Kiddushat taguf can disappear. That's what Abayez says. Um, but we're going to try to defend for Dava. Hacha b'may askinan, Damar lidmei Dava could say, this badaita, we're not talking about where he makes, consecrates the animal as a korban, but rather for its money, its monetary value. Uh, first he said, the value of this ox, if I sell it from now to 30 days, I'm going to use to buy an ola. But if I sell it after 30 days, then I want the monetary value of this ox to be used towards buying a shelamim. So that's what it's talking about. It's just Kiddushat Tamim. And Rava said, yes, Kiddushat Tamim can, uh, can simply go away. I want it to be uh, this value, and then I want the value to stop. In fact, the value, the kedusha of Damim can stop. All right, good. He saved himself. Rava saved himself. But now Abayez is not so fast. You have to take into account the continuation of that Braita. The Sefa seems to just switch around the order of the when it's going to be Ola and Shilamim. And he, first he says, after 30 days it'll be an Ola. But from now until then, I want it to be Shalamim. Right? In the first case, he said, I want it to be Ola first for 30 days and then Shalamim. And now he switches the order. Even though he mentioned Shil- Sh- um, Ola first here, um, just like he did before, but the Ola first is he's first mentioning the second part of the time period. And then he's saying, but now Shalamim. Um, so it seems like that also it works, and that will be the same thing. Now, why do I need the doubling of this baraita? Why does I have to give two different cases that seem to be the same principle? So, uh, so Abaye, who's, who's the one that brought it in the first place, he said, I can explain it, um, that one of these clauses is talking about Kiddushat Haguf, as I make, sure, make it a, one type of korban and then change a different type of korban. And the other clause is talking about monetary. I'm going to use it uh, the money, monetary value for one type of korban and then another. That's why the Braita brought two clauses to teach us both. If the Abraita had only one clause, then, uh, yes, I could interpret like you did, Rava, and I would think that this means that Kedusha, intrinsic in the body as a Korban, that cannot go away, but uh, monetary value only, that can disappear.
in order to teach us an extra chidush, it brought a second uh, case, even though they're really equivalent cases, um, because then I would know, wait a second, uh, one, one case would teach me kedushat damim, the second case is teaching me that the same is true for kedushat haguf. Yes, I could make something into an ola. Then I said, then I could put a time limit, and that Kiddushat Ola will just disappear and it will be a different kind of Kiddusha will come in its place. So there you go, Abaye says, yes, even Kiddushat Aguf can go away. Now, so this is a good proof for me, Abaye says, but for you, Ela Iyamat Idi Idi Kiddushat Amim, Yudava, you wanted to say that the whole Balaita is talking about Kiddushat Amim. You said that for the Resha. So what are you going to do for the Sefa? Why would you need it? It's redundant. Lama Lilimit Natarte, why do you need two clauses? Hashta Yeshlaman Mikedusha Tachamura, the Kedusha Kala Paka, Mikedusha Kala, the Kedusha Hamura, Serichale Mehmar. If I already told you in the first clause that a higher level Kedusha, that's Ola, I can, I can uh, give that a time limit and then it will go down a level to only Shelamim, which is a lower level, and yet the Kedusha Tamim goes away. So all the more so in the second clause, going from Shelamim to Ola, where it goes on to a higher level of sanctity, all the more so the Kiddushat Tamim. So it would be redundant for you if you say the whole thing is Kiddushat Tamim. Therefore, it must be that this Baraita teaches that both Kiddushat Tamim, monetary, and Kiddushat Aguf, the intrinsic, both of them, both types of Kiddushat, can disappear without a trace. Okay, good. So with this conclusion in mind, now we're going to relate it to the original Bar Pada and Ula. Remember, Bar Pada said uh, that um, that Kedusha cannot disappear. Uh, uh, Bar Pada said that even about monetary. That's something that you know, even a monetary value cannot disappear because these trees, they uh, require a redemption even at the end, even after my condition was fulfilled. I said until they're cut down, they should be holy. And then, uh, and then afterwards, uh, Bar Pada said they still remain holy, and you have to you have to redeem it onto money. But according to the Baraita that we just uh, said here. Uh, Bayesh showed that this Baraita proves that not only Kiddushah Damim, even Kiddushah Taguf can disappear. Now, this was important to go through this exercise in order to disprove Bar Pada, even though Bar Pada said, no, not even Kiddushah Damim could disappear, because if you had only the Resha, um, then the Resha Bar Pada could possibly explain. Because in that case, in the Resha, he just says, listen, there's Kiddushah Damim on, the, on this animal to be used for an Ola, and now I want to switch it to be used for Shelamim. Well, in that case, it's not disappearing. It's the same thing as uh, rede- redeeming it into money, but instead of redeeming it into money, I'm taking the monetary value of this ox that was be supposed to be for an ola, and I will switch it, redeem it, exchange it for the monetary value of the ox, still koli, and now I'll just use it for shelamim. So Rapada could say, I'm not, I'm not disappearing anything. And if I had only the Resha. But once you have the Sefa also, and the Sefa is adding some other case, and uh, that's a new case, and Abaye proved that it can only mean that this is talking about not only Kedushat Damim, even Kedushat Aguf can disappear. Certainly, Kedushat Damim can disappear. This is a challenge to uh, Bar Pada. So, how is Bar, Bar Pada going to answer this? Luckily, uh, we have an answer. Amara Papa, Amalach Bar Pada. Hachika Amar. Here's how Bar Pada could explain the Sefa. The Resha he could explain, as we just said, that I'm simply transferring the Kedusha of the ox to itself, but going to use it for a different purpose. That's fine. The Sefa is talking about this case. Imlo Amar Me'achshav Shelamim Lachar Shiloshim Yom Ola Have. It is called talking about Kedushat Haguf, but it's simply saying that. As long as you don't say that it will be Shalamim now, if I just say that it will be an Ola in 30 days, that is permitted. Uh, now, it's difficult to fit this into the wording of the original Baraita, and some say he is simply explaining it, but it really doesn't fit into the words very well. This could be a kind of hasure mechasera, he is, or hachi katane, he's um, rewording the Mishnah, the, this Baraita, certainly he's reinterpreting it, 
in a radical way. Okay, but even so, what does he mean by it? He means as follows. If a person says, I want this animal to be an Ola sacrifice, but not from now. I want it to take effect in 30 days. That works. As long as he said it, even though he said it from now, and in 30 days he could be sleeping all day, nevertheless it will take effect automatically. The problem is if he adds another phrase and says, oh, in the meantime, from now for the next 30 days, I want it to be Shalamim. That will be a problem because once he makes it Shalamim first, it remains Shalamim because you cannot undo that Kiddushah. You can't, it t- can't disappear. So in this reading, it's actually a proof for Barpada that Kiddushah cannot go away, at least Kiddushah Taguf cannot disappear, um, because once I say, it's going to be a Shalamim from now, and then after, afterwards it'll change to an Ola. No, once he made it Shalamim, the Kiddushah of Shalamim remains, and there's no way to change it. Um, but if I didn't say anything uh, now, I just want it to be nothing now, and then become an Ola, Kedushat Ola, in 30 days, that works good. So that's how the Papa explains this very nicely, as long as you're willing to change around a couple of words. Now, and the Papa is going to bring a proof that you can do this, this kind of mechanism of delayed, um, delayed Kedusha. If I go to him and say, Right, you are betrothed to me with this money, but I don't want it to take effect now. I don't want to be Mikudeshit right now. I want it to take effect in 30 days. That works. Even if the money, I gave it to the woman, even if she went and spent it, even if she doesn't have the money anymore, you don't have to be, even be around her, it will work automatically, automatically on the 30th day, the Kiddushin will kick in. It could have a huge effect, you know, if, uh, if she would be with someone else before the 30 days, she wouldn't get punished. Once that 30 day mark happens and uh, she slept with someone else, then she would be liable. Okay, good. So you see that it's the same thing, and this is this baraita's proof is is teaching this law. We ask Rav Papa if this is the meaning of the baraita peshita. Isn't that obvious that I can say something now for it to take effect in thirty days? Of course it can. And the answer is la sericha de No, it's teaching us something extra that. If I want to retract, I cannot retract. If I say this animal is going to be an Ola sacrifice starting in 30 days, and then after three days, I change my mind. Say, you know what? I really don't want to make it a sacrifice. I shouldn't have done that. Then, sorry, once I did that, once I uh, put that into effect, then there's no way to undo it. Okay, so that's the Chidush. Fine, I'll accept that Chidush as long as the parallel works for the Ketz of Kiddushin with a woman. The same thing. If I told a woman, here, you are Mikudesh to me in 30 days, and then she wants to change her mind. So she accepts it at first. When I give her the money, she says, okay, I agree. A woman has to agree to Kiddushin. It cannot be forced upon her. If she agrees, and then um, in three, after a few days, she says, no, what? I changed my mind. I don't want to be Mikudesh She cannot change her mind. And so the parallel works. It will work according to that opinion that she cannot change her mind. But when, within that uh, topic, there's another opinion, it's look at there. And the other opinion says she can change her mind. So if she can change her mind, then that should mean that also for the animal case, uh, we're not comparing people to animals here, um, but rather we're just we're, we're comparing uh, making, uh, the, making something Kodesh, Kadosh, in 30 days, can you retract? If you say you cannot retract regarding a woman, then you also shouldn't be able to retract regarding the animal, and then there's no Chidush. And we answer, No, in fact, the cases are different. And I may very well agree that in the case of a woman, she can change her mind. She has to agree to it. And as long as the Kiddushin didn't actually take effect, she can always veto, say, sorry, I changed my mind, I'm out. But that's different from taking this animal and saying, I'm, gonna, I'm going to consecrate it in the 30 days as a sacrifice because we have a principle that a declaration of dedicating something to uh, on high to God is the same as legally effectuates the same thing as transferring it physically to another person so just like a regular person if I say listen I'm giving you this gift um, but I want the gift to take effect in 30 days okay so here you're gonna take possession in 30 days but 
I want to actually hold, hand it to you now. So I'm going to put it in your physical possession, but you don't have ownership on it yet until 30 days. If I do that, and then I want to change my mind, you say, sorry, you can't change your mind anymore because I already it's already in his possession, and I promised it to him in 30 days, I cannot change my mind. So the principle would now applies that saying something is going to be Kodesh, makes it like I transferred it to God's realm, right? Afterwards, after all, we say, right, uh, God uh, owns everything in the world every and, if, uh, and everything that's in it. And therefore, no matter where it is, even if it's in my house, it's already uh, transferred to God's uh, domain. And therefore, once I said I'm going to uh, consecrate it, it is already consecrated and you can't do anything about it. So there you go. We answered, uh, we solved the Papa's problem. It doesn't matter whether you think that Kiddushi and she can change her mind or not. In the case of, uh, of giving the Ola, it does work after 30 days and there's no way I can change my mind in, in the meantime. Good. Now. We have um, a fun story. Yatev Rabbi Abin, Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Kameh de Rabbi Irmiya. These two sages, Rabbi Abin and Rabbi Yitzchak, the son of Rabbi, were sitting before Rabbi Irmiya. Sitting before means they were um, uh, students uh, studying from Rabbi Irmiya. The Kamit Namnem Rabbi Irmiya. Rabbi Irmiya, the teacher, was uh, was dozing off. I once had a teacher that in a graduate uh, seminar that the teacher he often would doze off in the middle while the graduate students were presenting. Um, uh, but I guess we were too boring. Um, now, so while the teacher is dozing, the students continue conversing. This is according to the Pada. Uh, based on what we just said here, that Peda'an, Chozot Vekotshot, actually Bar, Bar Pada that we started with all the way in the beginning of the sugya, uh, he said that if I say this tree will be um, Kodesh from now until it gets cut down, and then I redeem it, immediately becomes consecrated again. Redeem it, immediately become consecrated again. According to that Bar Pada, we can use that to solve another problem we have in a different area. Tifshot de Ba'er Rav Hoshaya. Rav Hoshaya had a question, and now we can use Bar Pada to answer that question. His question was, also comparing Kiddushin to, um, uh, to uh, animal sacrifice. Kiddushin. So Rav Hoshaya's question was, if I go to a woman and I say, here's one peruta. Peruta is the minimum amount to do Kiddushin. Say, haret mekudesh with this peruta from now. And with the other peruta that I'm giving you, with that, I want you to, you to be mikudesh to me after I divorce you. So now the question is, would that work? Would that mean that I'm mikudesh now? And then at some, at some later time, I give my wife a get. And then immediately, because she already accepted the, first, the second peruta that I gave her way at the beginning, now she immediately becomes mikudesh again. Does that work? It seems like yes, because look at what Parpada said. He said with this uh, tree, um, and once I make it consecrated, and I say it's consecrated from now until it gets cut down, then even though I redeemed it, redeeming would be equivalent of giving a get, immediately becomes consecrated again. The statement that I said way at the beginning has the ability to re-consecrate it even after I redeemed it. So too, the Kiddushin, the second Kiddushin I did at the beginning with the second Peruta, will take effect even after the get. And therefore, yes, it seems it should work. That's what the students were telling to, t t t telling to, saying to each other. Okay, so far so good. Now, in my graduate seminar, my teacher, even though he was dozing, um, always would wake up once we were finished our presentation and then have brilliant insights and, and questions and challenges to us. The same thing here with Rabbi and Miyah. He's dozing, but he wasn't totally sleeping. He's listening. So, it'al behu Rabbi Miyah. Rabbi Miyah woke up and he said, Amar lehu, Maika medamitun peda'an hu lifta'um acherim. Acherim? Wait a second. Are you comparing when the person himself does the redemption and when someone else does the redemption, that's different. If I, I'm, if I say this tree will be consecrated until I cut it down and I redeem it, 
then it be uh, and I, I redeem it, it becomes consecrated again because I, I can't undo my my words and it continues to be consecrated but if someone else redeems it then that works Rabbi Yochanan explained that only if I do uh, do the uh, redeem, redemption then it becomes consecrated again but if someone else does it because they were an outside party once they redeem it that's it they, right? anyone can redeem it once they do it that's it the Kedusha goes away and because they did it and they're not the one that said the original formula it works once and once and for all and doesn't become Kodesh again so how does that apply that exception apply to us a woman it's like a woman who gets divorced is like the brand, the tree that other people redeem how is it like that because the woman who's divorced is no longer under the authority of her husband she is an independent person and therefore if I want the Kiddushin to happen the second time she has to agree to it the second time and uh, they cannot be automatically renewed there's not like an order you know auto renew subscription it doesn't work right um, rather uh, she would have to agree all over again and even though in this case it's the same person that's doing that doing it twice is different than the branch and the branch you know I I, I, re- I consecrated the branch if I redeem it it goes back again because the branch is not its own being uh, but a woman is her own being and so the woman compared to her first husband is the same as uh, the woman compared to a third party or the branch compared to a third party and uh, therefore it's not the same and sorry you have not resolved Rav Hoshaya's, um, uh, Rav Hoshaya's question uh, because these two cases are not similar. Itmar Nameh, Amar Rabbi Ameh, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, another similar statement that Rabbi Ameh said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, who also said this statement here, Lo shanu ela shepedan hu, aval peda'um acherim, en chozrot ukudoshot, um, that we only say when the person himself who made the consecration of the tree, if he redeems it, then it automatically becomes reconsecrated, but if someone else redeemed it, then it does not automatically become Become reconsecrated. All right, so it's really a beautiful suya comparing very uh, so many different areas of kedusha, kedusha, uh, kedusha of money, kedusha of a goof regarding a sacrifice, and kedusha of kedushin uh, with with a woman, and by uh, comparing them and trying to learn one from one thing from the other, we also learn the significant differences that there are between each realm of halacha. Baruch Adonai Lodam, Amen, Amen.